In this video, we're going to look at controlling a servo with a 555 timer using this circuit that I set up. And the uh, oscilloscope here I just have uh, quickly set up there. But you can see when I turn the trim pot to the right, the way we got it set up, the servo moves to the right. When I turn it to the left, the servo moves to the left. And you can see that the pulse that is used to set the servo position gets longer when we move it to the left and it gets shorter when we move it to the right so we're going to discuss this uh, circuit and uh, the uh, pulse and stuff coming up and so to begin with I took apart the circuit we'll build it step by step there's uh, jumpers already on the board they help with placement so I'm just going to leave them but uh, in any case there's all kinds of schematic diagrams if you do a Google search of a 555 timer controlled servo. And this is one that I found that works for me. And I have this value capacitor. The only thing is usually they say use a 56 kilo ohm resistor in this spot. I found a few different people that posted this schematic. That didn't work for me. I think it may be because this is a cheap servo and it's not working exactly as they uh, as it's supposed to but uh, any case it does work as you saw so I'm gonna run with it so any case just be aware of that uh, you may need a 56 kilo ohm resistor where I have a 22 kilo ohm resistor so this is probably the main resistor that uh, you'll adjust if your circuits not working properly so to begin with we have to power the 555 timer circuit so pin number eight is the uh, VCC, the positive power supply pin, and then pin number one over the left here is ground. So there's a little divot and uh, a little notch at the top there, so we know that's the top left. So we just power that. And right now, pin number four down here is connected directly to the positive rail. That just makes sure that that pin doesn't do anything. That is the reset pin. and if you give that a low voltage basically it turns the pin off and then when you give it a high signal back on again so we don't ever want to turn this off this is a stable mode it just keeps delivering pulses in this case so we leave it to the positive rail so that the reset pin isn't doing anything so that's the uh, the uh, power pins and the uh, reset pin so we got three pins out of the way now we are going to start working our way here we have the uh, trim pot so this one needs a 100k trim pot which again I have if you don't have that value trim pot there's other schematics out there for 10 kilo ohm trim pots and uh, so you'll have to look for them and build them but uh, the process should be about the same so in my case I needed a 22 kilo ohm resistor right there that goes from the trim pot to pin 7 that's pin 7 up there and ultimately this is how we're going to be charging our resistor or our capacitor coming up and uh, so now we want to charge through the diode to the capacitor which is at pin 6 and so let's grab that and uh, we're just kind of working our, our path that way and then over there so that's just kind of my process now so the anode the positive side that's the side without the stripe the cathode is the side with the stripe so we're gonna put the anode to the discharge pin and then the cathode to the threshold pin pin six and uh, there we go right there and it's gonna be a little crowded in this area for this circuit and so now we have in this case a 3.3 million 3.3 mega ohm resistor I have an M there in place of the decimal point it shows up better and so that goes parallel to the diode that we just did so it's connected pin 7 and pin 6 so now the capacitor uh, 22 nanofarad works nice exact value if you don't have that one you can use a different value but you'll have to use different value resistors also and so oops I uh, 
start putting it in the wrong spot. But uh, there you go. Now it's going to pin 6, the threshold pin. So pin 6 monitors the voltage of the capacitor. And when the capacitor charges up to two-thirds of the uh, power supply voltage, that's when pin 6 jumps into action to discharge the capacitor. And we need to add, as you can see here, a little jumper from pin 6 to pin 2. So I'll do that right now. And what pin 2 does is, I just talked about when the voltage rises to two-thirds of the power supply voltage, pin 6 jumps into action to discharge it. When the capacitor is discharging, now pin 2 is monitoring it, and when it gets below one-third of the power supply voltage, that is when uh, pin 2 jumps into action, it stops the discharge so that the capacitor can start charging again. And now we need our output. The output is the uh, servo. And so the servo here, this, I don't know if it's going to show up now. It's uh, SG90 on there. It says Tower, there we go, Tower Pro. My gross servo, 9 gram, SG90 right there. So it has a brown, a red, and an orange. It might look yellow on camera, but that's orange. And so I just got these jumpers over here. There's the female side. You just slide those in. And so green, the uh, yellow, or the orange here, I mean, and thus the green here, that is for the signal. So the signal comes from pin number three here of the 555 timer. And then we just plug this into the power supply. It's made for a 5 volt power supply. And uh, so we can just connect those two pins directly. And so the uh, red wire, of course, is the positive side of the power supply. Pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, we got brown here for the negative side of the power supply. And uh, so that's just something you got to look up if you're not sure of what each wire does. But uh, there we go. We should be done with our build right now. So not too bad. But as I said before, I had to adjust the value of one of my capacitors. But as you can see, when I turn the uh, trim pot clockwise, the servo turns clockwise, but it stops there. And then counterclockwise, it turns counterclockwise. But that's as far as it can go. So we have 180 degrees of uh, motion. So now I'm going to turn it off. Let's say we want it to turn the other way. All I have to do is pop out this jumper and move it to the other side of the trim pot. And uh, I was hoping I could do it a little easier than it went. But uh, in any case, camera's kind of in where I'd like to stand instead. So there we go. That wasn't too bad. So now we move that jumper. And now you'll see that when I turn the trim pot clockwise, there we go. Now the servo turns counterclockwise, the opposite direction. So if it's turning the opposite direction of what you want with this particular setup, you just move where the jumper is that the uh, positive power supply is coming to the trim pot. So now let's look at the schematic a little bit more because as I said, before the servo depends on pulses and I think for some reason the servo doesn't uh, respond to pulses exactly as uh, it should for whatever reason but uh, in any case it does respond to pulses so we have the uh, positive side of the power supply we need to charge the capacitor well the capacitor is charging the output is high and so we have a 100 kilo ohm trim pot, which we can set down to zero ohms of resistance, which since I'm using a 22 kilo ohm resistor, means we have 22,000 ohms of resistance limiting the current, and thus how fast the capacitor charges. And then of course we can go up to 100 kilo ohms, which we have the uh, trim pot as a variable resistor. I moved that jumper back to uh, where it was before. But uh, in any case, we can go down to 22 kilo ohms of resistance or up to 122 kilo ohms of resistor 
the higher the resistance, the slower the capacitor will charge. So now, it gets up to two thirds of the power supply voltage, output's high, and then uh, pin six drops the output low and also discharges the capacitor. So this side's more positive than that side, so it cannot go through the diode. It has to go through our 3.3 million ohm resistor, which is a lot more resistance. So it's gonna take a lot longer for it to discharge. And and so, uh, it's discharging at the same time the output, pin number three, is off. And so it's gonna be off a whole lot longer than it is on because there's a lot more resistance for the discharge of the capacitor. That's why it is a pulse. It's on for a short period of time and then off for a long period of time. And of course, as I said, pin number six starts the discharge. Pin number two starts the charge. So it's bouncing back and forth. Pin number six senses we have two thirds of power supply voltage. It starts discharging the capacitor. And then once pin number two here senses we're down to one third or less of the power supply voltage, it stops the discharge and then allows the uh, charge. So pin six, discharge and low output. And then pin number two starts the charge and the high output. So now moving along. So far we had to just kind of imagine the uh, current flow and stuff. A lot of times that's the most you can do. But of course, ideally you should use an oscilloscope. And so this is the Sane Smart DSO Notel oscilloscope. It's really the only oscilloscope I have other than the multimeter one that I have. And uh, but this one's better. So I'm gonna run you through using this. So now I had this plugged in earlier. It does have a battery. We have the uh, power button there. Just quickly press that. And every time I turn it on, we have this set up here. And let's see if uh, zooming in clear stuff up. But in uh, any case, first thing I want to do, I'm going to hit the arrow there. And actually, channel B, that's that yellow line. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go to enable and off. So there, that gets rid of the yellow line. As I said, every time you turn this on, it uh, goes back to uh, where we hit the setup that we had right there. And so while we're here, this is a 0.2 milliseconds. We're gonna look at longer periods of time. So I think uh, five milliseconds right now will work best. And let's uh, go up and swipe this over. We'd like to get the uh, duty. Let's do the uh, duty. Oops, I want the uh, duty for, it's for uh, channel B, which we're not going to use. We want it for channel A. So we should have the duty down there. Uh, let's go back though. So, channel A, that's what we're going to use now. It's set for alternating current, which means that when it's zero volts, it won't stay down here. It's going to start sliding around. And so, what we want, we want to go down. So AC, DC, we want DC right there. And that's going to hold that line right there when it's zero volts. And when the voltage goes up, it will be up there and then come back down to zero. Whereas when it's alternating, it wants to find the center point of all the movement and put that in the center of the screen. So that's all I'm going to change for uh, this right now. I'm going to leave it like this. The settings will stay. And at the beginning of the video I showed the oscilloscope, I used this jumper here to keep it from sliding around, it's light, uh, but for now I'm just going to stick this here. All we're really interested in is the waveform, and you can read up on the servo waveforms uh, more detail later on. We're going to keep this simple, so here's the uh, probe, and we plug this one into a channel over here, so that's the uh, top there. And I only have one probe, so I can only take one measurement. And two, we want to connect this to ground, the negative rail. So I just clip it to this blue jumper. And then, however I need to move it around to not block the camera, I just plug it into the negative rail. So I might as well just put it up there. And I keep all the wires down here. 
trying to not block the oscilloscope. So there we go. That's all we have to do. Turn the power on. And uh, right now the uh, servo is in this position. And let's see, uh, let's see if it's actually working first. So there we go. Yep, it's working. And I don't think, yeah, I didn't make a good connection. That was a problem. But there you go. We have, uh, there we go. There you can see, oops, you could see a short uh, pulse right there. There's the tiny pulse. And it's actually a whole bunch of pulses. But to kind of zoom in, we limited what we can see. So now you can see the pulse getting wider and the pulse getting shorter as the servo moves. So I showed that at the beginning. Uh, the main takeaway is it's the pulse width there. How long we give a high signal that determines the position of the uh, servo. So there's a lot more to it, but that's the main takeaway for the servo. So uh, hopefully I can make uh, better videos on this. I'm new to servos, using servos. And uh, as I said before, I suspect this servo might not be uh, behaving exactly as it's supposed to but as you can see we got it to work that's the uh, main thing for now so hopefully I can make better servo video and 555 timer videos but uh, hopefully you still enjoyed this one thanks for watching